Well, just as the weatherman predicted, the rain has shown up and put a stop to all my hot rodding, testing, and tuning of carburetors. And my day's still going better than Jeremy's. He's up at the farm trying to work on cleaning up messes, using my dad's dump truck, and blew a hydraulic line. So he had to go down and see Mark to get some caps. What is that? So what did you tell me you wanted? I need a cap for a hydraulic line. Okay, so that's a cap. That, Same that, thing as this, only in two extra pieces. Th this looks like something my brother would come up with. Well, he's rubbing off on me. Well, I, I only had one, and so you need two, and, and so I, you know, because of what I do, I made you another one. I can't help it that your brother's rubbing off on me, so. Jesus. Same end result. Just an extra piece. Let me okay. guess, you're gonna start ordering electrical wiring diagrams from him too. <laughs> oh, that's an idea. I don't think many people are gonna think that. Especially not Gen 2 Garage. <laughs> not Gen 2 Garage, no. they won't. No. All right, well. I don't think they were impressed by his wiring capabilities. <laughs> this is how hillbillies wire things. You just jam a wire behind the fuse. That was great. That's how cars burn to the ground. I apologize, it's not exactly what you wanted, but hey, it'll work. <sighs> So after Jeremy gets done getting Mark's blood pressure through the roof, he comes back to my shop to help me and Kenny work on the Malibu. Kenny's got the tail shaft pulled off of it so he can change the drive and driven gear for the speedometer cable. Since we switched to a 410 gear, the old gears are so far off the speedometer can't be corrected without changing the drive gear. So Kenny pulls that all apart and puts it back together. And while we've got it apart, I want to go ahead and have Jeremy help me notch this cross member so that the exhaust doesn't rub on it anymore. It makes quite a bit of racket when the engine torques up and the exhaust pipe rubs against the bottom of it. While we're on that side of the shop working on the Malibu, Allison's over in the shipping and receiving side working on her Gen 2 garage orders. Getting all her merchandise and t-shirts shipped out and she had so many she needed to haul them in the Suburban. They wouldn't fit in her Jeep. Anyway, Jeremy headed back up to the farm to work up there, and I decided today might be the day to get my dump truck dug out and get it taken up to the farm. But that project proved to be quite a process because I need the skid loader to move that truck bed and the water tank, and the skid loader battery was dead. So I pulled the 64 out back, me and Kenny hooked the jumper cables to it, and Kenny helped me get it started. Once we had it fired up, Kenny helped me spread the forks apart so we could lift up that truck bed and move it safely. I don't want to damage this thing because we still intend to use it on that 71 that's sitting out front. Eventually, we'll get to that project. Anyway, once I got the truck bed moved out of the way, it was time to fire up the International and start saying my prayers that the truck would make the five and a half mile drive up to the farm. I rocked it out of its spot where it's been sitting since last year when I had to tow it home from the last trip I tried to make with it. I'm not so sure it's gonna make it, so I leave June Pup at home. And as I hit the road with the truck, at first I think it's gonna be fine. But it didn't take long, and the death noises come right back. And they're getting louder and louder and louder. I quickly shifted my sights from making it to the farm to just across the railroad tracks. The truck actually made it to the top of the hill past the tracks and died. I think a connecting rod or the crankshaft may have broken in half. I managed to coast the truck from the top of that hill to the crest of the next hill. And that's where we sat, dead in the water. Well, we made it this far. I'm about four miles from the farm and I think the crankshaft broke. We're done. Unless Jeremy can come tow me with a chain before the air runs out. So if you're not familiar with dump trucks with air brakes, the brakes work on pressurized air, and there's an air compressor on the engine that pressurizes the air tanks. Once that air compressor stops running and the air runs out, the brakes set and you can no longer move the truck. I have a limited supply of air left in the tanks. Before the air runs out, the brakes set, and then we will really be in trouble. At this point, we're less than a mile from the farm, and we've got one major road to pull out on and make this left turn. If we can make this left turn and make it to the driveway, we're home free. Making their way the only way they know how. Yeah. That's just a little 
little bit more than the law will allow. You may not be able to tell it by my mood and actions, but I was pretty stressed out trying to get that truck up to the farm today. I was really relieved when I could finally set that air brake, turn off the four ways, and get out of that truck. Perfect. We got her done, old son. Yeah. Poor Jeremy. He was not as excited <laughs> as I was because now that we're back at the farm, he's got to get back to cleaning up all this scrap, load it on dad's dump truck. But before he can do that, he's got to fix this broken hydraulic line and cap the lines off at the control valve above the hydraulic tank. But that's not the only thing he's got left to do today. My dad left him a special job to remove the power troll off this John Deere 60 parts tractor out along the barn so he can swap that power troll onto his 52A. The 60 and the A are basically the same tractor. The A just doesn't have power steering. Regardless, dad wants to swap this power troll onto the A so he can use it to raise and lower the three bottom plow that he plans on using this planting season. So anyway, Jeremy gets this thing removed off the 60 and takes it in the shop so that dad can possibly put it on maybe later on tonight. What are you doing? Oh, I'm trying to clean up some of this stock chrome. With what? Oh, some jack wax polish. Yeah, a little bit of steel wool, some real fine steel wool. Did a really nice job on the bumper. Look how nice the bumper looks now. I've been festering over this chrome on the car ever since the day Billy bought it. It's needed to be cleaned up and polished, but I wasn't sure really what to use. Well, tonight I finally broke down and got some steel wool out and some Jack's Wax polish, and everything turned out pretty decent for chrome this old. Well. What? Did the dump truck make it to the farm? It did. Under its own power? Partially. I knew it. I knew when you pulled out. I always pray when you pull out of the driveway doing risky stuff, but today I just, I felt like my prayers weren't gonna be enough. Well, they were because I made it. <sighs> With the help of Jeremy and a chain. But I made it. I'll take that. I See? guess that, I guess that qualifies. <sighs> All right, guys, so welcome back to the shop. Miss Vicki has gone in to bed. <laughs> She's done for the day, but I'm still out here. Anyway, tonight, I want to work on something here in the garage with you guys. I want to go over the nitrous kit on the Malibu. I've had a lot of people message. I've had a lot of comments, uh, people asking for the details of the nitrous kit and uh, what all this entails. So with that said, let's get started. This is a Nitrous Express mainline kit. It is the rock bottom cheapest nitrous kit, complete nitrous kit, I think that anybody sells right now, which is why I bought it, because it's probably gonna be the one that most people would go to if they're a beginner, they're wanting to get started in a little bit of nitrous action. <laughs> You're gonna buy probably the cheapest kit you can get your hands on and get your feet wet. So that's what I did. I bought the Nitrous Express mainline kit for a 4150 carburetor. Now, I did buy the kit at Jegs, and I bought basically the entire kit, everything that uh, went into putting this kit together from Jegs. Um, and I'll include the Jegs part numbers as we go. But the kit comes with your nitrous plate, your feed line, bottle, a uh, pair of bottle brackets, uh, your solenoids, and the fittings. Also, some wiring that uh, comes with an arming switch, which I did not happen to use, uh, and it also comes with a push button. I also didn't use that one, not for any bad reason, just because I wanted to do something a little bit nicer than what just comes in a kit. So anyway, the kit is very straightforward, but like I said, I did upgrade a few things, and we'll start in the trunk with mounting the bottle. Uh, the kit does not come with a nitrous bottle pressure gauge. Uh, that is something you definitely want to look into getting. Um, I went ahead and bought a fitting and a Nitrous Express bottle pressure gauge. It's important because if you've never used nitrous before, it is imperative that you know 
what the bottle pressure is. Uh, 900 to 1,000 PSI is the sweet spot. That's where you want to be. If it's higher than that, if your bottle pressure is higher than 1,000, you run the risk of, well, damaging the engine if the tune-up's not right. But you also run the risk of sticking the nitrous solenoids where they're not strong enough to open under that bottle pressure. Okay, So most of these solenoids are intended to be used between 900 and I'd say 1,100 PSI max. Um, anything over 1,000 PSI, I, I have found that sometimes even the purge won't open. So it's imperative, guys, if you want to get into this nitrous game, buy yourself a nitrous bottle pressure gauge. Okay, So we mounted the bottle in the trunk. And I didn't use the standard brackets that came with the kit. I elected to upgrade to a Speedmaster billet bottle bracket. And the part number for that is here on the screen. Uh, again, I bought this at Jeg's. Uh, Uncle Terry <laughs> sold it to me. If you'd like to call in there and talk to the salesman at Jeg's on 11th Avenue. Uh, Uncle Terry is the one that got me all this stuff. And he will be more than happy to help you assist you in any way, shape, or form, tell him I sent you, okay? So we, we upgraded to a Speedmaster bottle bracket, and Uncle Rob, Big Rob from Street Racing Channel, uh, was here, and he helped the kids put this stuff in, and he actually uh, made some brackets and spot welded them to the floor of the Malibu instead of just drilling holes, and the reason for that is that the gas tank is right below where the bottle mounts. So we couldn't just drill holes uh, and run the risk of drilling into the tank. Plus, we wouldn't be able to get to the nuts without dropping the tank. We didn't want to get into that. So Rob pulled the carpet back and tack welded some brackets uh, to the floor and then bolted the Speedmaster bottle brackets to the bracket that he welded to the floor. So it turned out really nice. And if we ever want to remove it, all we got to do is grind those spot welds and you can put it right back and nobody would ever know it was ever done. So we've covered the bottle. We've covered the bottle brackets and the gauge, where we mounted it, how we mounted it, and why. The next step is routing the nitrous line. So they drilled a hole in the trunk in the floor pan in an inconspicuous area, <laughs> and Rob routed the dash four nitrous bottle feed line uh, from the trunk all the way up the driver's side frame rail, tucked it in nice and neat, uh, protected it where it needed to be protected, and then ran it up the firewall below the master cylinder, and it comes out right at the power brake booster uh, and attaches to the solenoid on the carburetor, which the solenoid I mounted uh, off of one of the carb studs, and we'll get to that here in a minute. The solenoids are intended to be just hung by the steel uh, nitrous uh, fittings and lines that the kit comes with, and I elected to upgrade that and mounted the solenoids rigidly using some NOS nitrous solenoid brackets off the carburetor studs because that's what JEGS had in, at, at the time when I was there. And uh, the nitrous solenoid actually hangs upside down to give clearance behind the carburetor so it's not sticking up in the way of the throttle linkage. Mounting the nitrous solenoids this way, I prefer uh, over letting them hang on some steel lines because vibration and things like that get to them. The fittings end up loosening up and you can either end up with a nitrous leak, which is not good, or even worse, a fuel leak. The flex lines are just braided lines. They're like little sections of dash three brake line is what they really are, but uh, JEGS sells them as nitrous flex lines, whatever. Um, and if you call in there to JEGS, they can get you patched up, especially Uncle Terry. He'll take care of you. He'll get you all the fittings you need to set it up this way if you'd like. The next step in the process of putting the nitrous kit on is mounting the nitrous plate. And it's a very simple, straightforward process. You just simply unbolt the carburetor and you install the carburetor studs that come with the kit. They'll be longer than normal because the plate's about a half inch thick. Uh, but the, the kit comes with the needed carburetor studs. You install your carburetor studs, you put a gasket down, lay the plate down right side up, make sure the NX is right side up. Uh, and it's it says right on the plate, this side up. Just make sure <laughs> that you don't put it on upside down. It will run that way, but not very well. Uh, just lay the plate on, put another gasket on top of that, bolt the carburetor back down, and the plate's installed. It's that simple. Now, there's a lot of different ways to wire your nitrous system. And I chose the most simple way possible. <laughs> 
Uh, however, I was not uh, in a position mentally to drill holes in this 26,000 mile original Malibu dash. So what we did was I just used a tiny uh, single pole on off switch that I found would fit between the water and temperature or water temperature and oil pressure gauge. This was actually Big Rob's idea and God bless him for it because uh, I really like the way this turned out. But we drilled a hole in the uh, gauge mounting bracket and mounted this on off switch in between the gauges. So we're not drilling holes in this nice mint Malibu interior. And that system basically just turns the nitrous kit on and it also not only arms the system, but it also turns on the fuel pump on the fuel cell. We'll get to that here in just a minute. So you arm the nitrous system by turning the switch on, and then there's uh, buttons on the shifter. I bought this uh, Hurst uh, overdrive transmission, like a quarter stick shifter, kind of a fancy one, uh, and bought a special handle that has two put, uh, buttons on it, uh, the top one is the nitrous button, and I was going to use the bottom one maybe for a line lock or something like that. But anyway, um, very simple process. There's a lot of diagrams online you can find that stuff. I'm not going to dig into that right here right now. But for right now, this is the way it's set up. Now, that's not going to be the way it's always set up. And the reason I did it this way, instead of off the wide open throttle switch, which I have mounted already on the carburetor, I didn't use the wide open throttle switch because uh, I don't want to spray this thing in low gear at the track with the seven and a half inch 10 bolt rear end for obvious reasons. And we've already gone through one set of ring and pinion gears. Uh, and hopefully we've got that behind us. Thank you to Rich at Lucor and Austin because they've really bailed me out of this last one. Uh, we'll get to that later, maybe in another video. But uh, so right now the nitrous that I have is set up just on a button so I can, I can hit it when I want it. And I have no intentions of spraying this thing in low gear until after we put a heavier duty rear end in it, whether it's a grand national eight and a half, I'd love to have one of those and keep this car all GM and just bolt it in. That would be wonderful, but they're very rare and hard to find. If anybody out there has an 8.5 grand national 10 bolt rear end, email me at billhoskinson406 at gmail.com. I would love to talk to you and talk some business because I would like nothing better than to keep this car all GM. Um, outside of that, I'll probably put a nine inch Ford in it for Mosier, most likely. So now moving on, we have one more part of this system to discuss, and that is the fuel supply side. Now, there's many ways of doing this. This is my particular favorite, and I'm gonna explain to you why. I am a very, 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 very firm believer in spraying nitrous with race gas. Uh, obviously, the Malibu runs on pump gas, the carburetor runs on pump gas, uh, and that's expensive enough <laughs> as it is today. I won't get into that, but race gas is obviously much more expensive, and if you do it the way I did it, you'll save quite a bit of money in the long run. So I used a Speedmaster aluminum one gallon fuel cell. I bought it from Jegs. I would give you the part number if I could find it, but Jegs website is uh, horrendous. I know I bought this, Terry sold it to me at Jegs, but I cannot find it on Jegs website anywhere. I've tried three or four times. I can't find this fuel cell. I promise you though, Jegs does have it, but this one gallon uh, fuel cell is mounted right here in the front of the car, right behind the driver's side headlight. And I use a very simple fuel system, which is a Holly red pump that's just deadheaded straight to the fuel uh, solenoid up here beside the carburetor. And I just use, a, I think it's a Dash 4 uh, fuel line. And I went ahead and installed a fuel pressure gauge so that I can tell if the pump is going bad or if there's a stoppage or if there's an issue with the fuel side, the fuel pressure gauge should show it. But it's a very simple setup. Uh, the pump is preset from the factory at six and a half PSI. The gauge verifies that. Now don't get too excited because gauges go up and down. Uh, you always wanna check your fuel pressure with the underhood area cold, okay? Once the underhood area gets hot, from engine heat, 
any liquid filled gauge is going to show lower bottle pressure or lower fuel pressure than what it's actually making. Uh, so I just like to have that fuel pressure gauge there for my own satisfaction and my own personal security <laughs> because I have insecurities about fuel pressure uh, on nitrous. But this is a very simple system. And when you arm the nitrous system inside the car, the fuel pump kicks on and it's just got a little relay mounted right here behind the headlight on the uh, core support. And the power is fed from the battery, which in this car is still up here in the front. Uh, it's a very simple system. It works very well. The car makes very good power. Uh, this kit is adjustable and it comes with three sets of jets. I believe 150, 200, and 250, I think, if I remember right. But it comes with the jets and I stick, I just stuck with the jet chart and the jets that came with the kit. And there's no fancy voodoo or nothing. I put the 150 horsepower jets in it and it definitely wakes the car up. It is a lot of fun. It is a tremendous amount of fun. It's addicting. It's like sticking a needle in your arm, being able to put something on the floor and hit a button and feel it almost double the horsepower. <laughs> it feels like you're doubling the horsepower. You're not, but some people are, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's so much fun to be able to just have that additional power at the uh, tip of your fingers. So that's going to do it for tonight, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the walk around the Malibu and everything else that we got into today. Uh, I'm going to get off here and get this video edited and get it posted up. So see you all maybe tomorrow. We've got some more projects to work on here in the shop and one very important one coming up that a lot of people have been asking for and it's going to happen. Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.